The Armenian hypothesis of the Proto-Indo-European homeland, proposed by Georgian Tomas V. Gamkrelidze and Russian linguist Vyacheslav Ivanov in 1985, suggests that Proto-Indo-European was spoken during the 5th–4th millennia BC in «Eastern Anatolia, the Southern Caucasus, and Northern Mesopotamia». Recent DNA research has led to renewed suggestions of a Caucasian homeland for a pre-Proto-Indo-European. It also lends support to the Indo-Hittite hypothesis, according to which both Proto-Anatolian and Proto-Indo-European split off from a common mother language, no later than the 4th millennium BCE. Topic: <laughs> Hypothesis. Gamkrelidze and Ivanov presented their hypothesis in Russian in 1980-1981 in two articles in Vestnik Drevnej Istory. During the following years they expanded and developed their work into their voluminous book, published in Russian in 1984. The English translation of the book appeared in 1995. In English a short sketch of the hypothesis first appeared in the early history of Indo-European languages, published in Scientific America in 1990. Thomas Gamkrelidze published an update to the hypothesis in 2010. According to Gamkrelidze and Ivanov, the Indo European languages derive from a language originally spoken in the wide area of eastern Anatolia, the southern Caucasus, and northern Mesopotamia. The Anatolian languages, including Hittite, split off before 4000 BCE, and migrated into Anatolia at around 2000 BCE. Around 4000 BCE, the Proto-Indo-European community split into Greek-Armenian Indo-Iranians, Celto-Italo-Tocharians, and Balto-Slavo-Germanics. At around 3000 2500 BCE, Greek moved to the west, while the Indo-Aryans, the Celto-Italo-Tocharians and the Balto-Slavo-Germanics moved east, and then northwards along the eastern slope of the Caspian Sea. The Tocharians split from the Italo-Celtics before 2000 BCE and moved further east, while the Italo-Celtics and the Balto-Slavo-Germanics turned west again towards the northern slopes of the Black Sea. From there, they expanded further into Europe between around 2000 and 1000 BCE. The phonological peculiarities of the consonants proposed in the glottalic theory would be best preserved in Armenian and the Germanic languages. Proto-Greek would be practically equivalent to Mycenaean Greek from the 17th century BC and closely associate Greek migration to Greece with the Indo-Aryan migration to India at about the same time the Indo-European expansion at the transition to the Late Bronze Age, including the possibility of Indo-European Kassites. The hypothesis argues for the latest possible date of Proto-Indo-European without Anatolian, roughly a millennium later than the mainstream Kurgan hypothesis. In this respect, it represents an opposite to the Anatolian hypothesis in spite of the geographical proximity of the respective suggested Urhamidan by diverging from the time frame suggested there by approximately 3,000 years. Reception Criticism Robert Drews says that most of the chronological and historical arguments seem fragile at best, and of those that I am able to judge, some are evidently wrong." However, he argues that it is far more powerful as a linguistic model, providing insights into the relationship between the Indo-European and the Semitic and Kartvelian languages. J. Greppen wrote in a review in the Times Literary Supplement the model of linguistic relationships as the most complex, far-reaching and fully supported of this century. Topic. Renewed interest Recent DNA research has led to renewed suggestions of a Caucasian homeland for a Proto-Proto-Indo-European. It also lends support to the Indo-Hittite hypothesis, according to which both Proto-Anatolian and Proto-Indo-European split off from a common mother language, no later than the 4th millennium BCE. Hawk et al. 2015 states that the Armenian Plateau hypothesis gains in plausibility, since the Yamnaya partly descended from a Near Eastern population, which resembles present-day Armenians. Yet, they also state that, the question of what languages were spoken by the Eastern European hunter-gatherers and the Southern, Armenian-like, ancestral population remains open. David Reich, in his 2018 publication Who We Are and How We Got Here, states that, 
The most likely location of the population that first spoke an Indo-European language was south of the Caucasus Mountains, perhaps in present-day Iran or Armenia, because ancient DNA from people who lived there matches what we would expect for a source population both for the Yamnaya and for ancient Anatolians. Nevertheless, Reich also states that some, if not most, of the Indo European languages were spread by the Yamnaya people, according to Krunen et al., 2018, Damgard et al., 2018, show no indication of a large scale intrusion of a steppe population. They further note that the earliest attestation of Anatolian names, in the army state, must be dated to 3000 2400 BCE, contemporaneous with the Yamnaya culture, concluding that a scenario in which the Anatolian Indo-European language was linguistically derived from Indo-European speakers originating in this culture can be rejected." They further note that this lends support to the Indo-Hittite hypothesis, according to which both Proto-Anatolian and Proto-Indo-European split off from a common mother language, no later than the 4th millennium BCE. Wang et al. 2018 note that the Caucasus served as a corridor for gene flow between the steppe and cultures south of the Caucasus during the Enneolithic and the Bronze Age, stating that this "...opens up the possibility of a homeland of Pi south of the Caucasus." Christian Christensen, in an interview with Der Spiegel in May 2018, stated that the Yamnaya culture may have had a predecessor at the Caucasus, where "...proto-proto-Indo-European," was spoken. Topic. See also Indo-Hittite Greco-Armeno-Aryan References Sources External links Very rough map of Indo-European migrations according to the hypothesis Indo-European family tree, showing Indo-European languages and sub-branches. <laughs>